in this module we will be looking at data wrangling and in terms of the big picture of the course uh, data wrangling comes uh, somewhat in this area here which is that before we can analyze the data properly visualize model and so on in fact even before we can transform it in some sense we need to import the data first and then tidy it up and then maybe transform it into a form that is more amenable to visualization modeling and so on okay uh, so wrangling is really in this part and the sense in which we are using the word wrangling is in terms of you know cowboys uh, herding cattle right so your initial data is sort of unruly unordered not particularly well organized for analysis and we have to go through this process of wrangling uh, which is importing tidying and transforming before we can do anything useful with it okay so uh, in this module today we'll be looking at uh, some aspects of wrangling and what are functionality we can use to achieve that the function as underscore table can be used to convert existing data frames into tables so for example in order to do that of course uh, this whole table thing is to be found in the library uh, package dplyr and in order to load that we first load tidyverse and once tidyverse is loaded we can take a look at the empty cars data frame so if you do em head empty cars you see the first six rows of empty cars and more particularly if you do class empty cars you see that it's actually a regular data frame so when you say class and you give any object it will tell you what sort of object it is so it's telling us that it's just a regular data frame and in order to work with dplyr functions and so on uh, we might want to convert it into a table so we do that by saying that is assigned the value as underscore table empty cars okay of course we could have gone and assigned it to empty to variable empty cars itself so if you use as underscore table on a regular data frame then you get a table and when you print that you can then see that it actually prints out like a table uh, like we've seen before with uh, it tells you that it's a table it tells you how many rows and columns it has and then for every column it shows you what type of variable is there in that column and then it also shows you uh, what are all the variables or uh, what are all the the columns that exist within this table okay of course if you do class that it'll tell you that it's indeed a table and in fact this is what it tells you it tells you of course that it's a data frame because a table after all is just a specialized version of a data frame and then it also tells you that it's uh, a table and also a table data frame you can also create tables very easily so here we are creating a table assigning it to the value uh, to the variable double w and then this table is going to have three columns x which is simply the vector the value is 1 to 5 y is just assigned the scalar 1 and z is assigned the expression x squared plus y now notice that here we are able to mix vectors scalars and a vector ultimately computed by combining vectors and scalars okay so this is not something that we could actually do with data frames but it's easily possible to do with tables and of course when you do this what results is a table it's a 5 by 3 table because you've got 5 rows and 3 columns and uh, x being 1 to 5 is no surprise we said x is 1 to 5 so that's fine y we just said is 1 but since it requires 5 by x requires 5 values obviously you're creating a data frame or a table and therefore all the columns have to have the same number of uh, values so it automatically extends it to five ones instead of just one one and here it computes of course since y is now five ones it can calculate x square plus y y and of course you see the results x square plus y just as you expect uh, so two square plus one is five three square plus one is ten uh, five square plus one is twenty six and all of that therefore when we compare tables with data frames we see some differences tables actually do less than data frames which is a good thing actually because when you look at data frames data frames end up changing column names so for example if you have an, a CSV file and within the CSV file you have some variable names for example you have column names which have spaces in them and so on now what a data frame would do while reading this is to change the column names because certain kinds of column names are not allowed in, 
in regular data frames. Tibbles are much less uh, stringent in that they allow us to have all sorts of col column names and so they don't have to mangle any of our column names at all. So that's a good thing. Uh, tibbles do not change the column types, right? So when you read character data in data frames, you know, when you do, for example, a read.csv and you read character data, then you find that within the data frame, character data are automatically converted into uh, factors. Tibbles don't do anything like that. When you read character data from a file, tibbles would just treat them as character data and we can then go ahead and convert what we want into factors. Right? So, uh, in that sense, th there is le uh, less unpredictability with tibbles. And finally, uh, tibbles allow non-standard column names, which I had alluded to while discussing the first point. Non-standard column names in the sense that you can have a column name which is actually just a number and tibbles are fine with that. They work. Just to illustrate what kind of non-standard column names you can have, consider this. So TB is tibble and the first column name is actually a smiley. It's a colon followed by a parenthesis, looks like a smiley. And uh, so uh, the way you create tibbles, if you remember, is give the column name and then equals and you give the values for that particular column. So here the column, the, the value is just smile. The second column name is actually just a space. And the third column name is a number. Now remember, these are the values that we are putting into the tibble, right? So after that, if you look at TB, uh, incidentally note that when you give non-standard column names, you have to surround them with backticks, right? This backtick character is what you will find uh, below the tilde key on your keyboard and that is usually uh, above the left tab key, right? On your keyboard there are two tab keys or actually there is only one tab key so it's above the tab key generally, okay? Uh, so that's what it is. So if you look at this table, if you print it out, you will find that indeed the column names are the crazy ones we give. Now we don't recommend that you use crazy character uh, column names like this. This example is simply showing you that it's actually possible. While creating tibbles with code, there is an even easier way to create tibbles and that's extremely intuitive. And that is through this thing called as a tribble or a transposed tribble. So we can say tribble and then uh, follow it up with the column names and you precede the column names with tildes. So tilde x, tilde y, tilde z. So those are going to be our three columns called x, y and z. We precede them with tilde to indicate that these are actually column names. And then this is just a comment to make it look like a table. So this is actually ignored by, by the processor. And then you give the actual values for the columns within, uh, you know, separated by commas. Okay. So here we are just uh, able to organize the data exactly in, it looks like a table as we enter it. This is not uh, the way it's going to look when you created an actual table as opposed to using the triple function to create a triple, right? So here we are creating three columns and the first column's values are A and B, second column's values are 2 and 1 and the third column's values are 3.6 and 8.5, okay? So you are able to enter it just as it would look, which is again very convenient. So if you look at it again, the results are the first column has A, B, the second column has 2, 1, the third column has 3.6, 8.5. Okay, so the way to create this would have been very different if we had used the triple, uh, the the tibble function as opposed to the triple function. Again, all of these are useful if you are creating uh, tibbles with code. If you are creating, on the other hand, tibbles by reading in a file, then these things are not relevant. As I've already pointed out, when we are creating tibbles with this triple um, function, it's convenient to put in a comment to indicate the separation between the column names and the actual data values. Of course, the separation as I indicated is just a comment because there is a hash here which says that uh, this is a comment and it will be ignored completely by the R processor. Okay. We have already seen how to print tibbles on the screen. We have seen lots of examples of that. And for example, we load the NYC flights data once again. And then if you print out, the flights is the name of the data frame uh, of the tibble contained in this data frame. Uh, sorry, in this package NYC flights 30 and we know that it prints out like this uh, and we have gone through this already, right? So it's telling us that it's a triple and it has 336,776 rows by 19 columns and it's showing us all the variable, the column names, it's showing us the types 
for each column which uh, data frame did not never did it's showing us the first 10 rows so even though we we actually printed uh, the the name of the table to be printed it doesn't go and spew out all of the data right for example we have 336000 rows here so if you had just said if it was a data frame and we had just given its name then it would just keep on uh, you know spewing out uh, stuff onto the console and then we'll have to uh, you know force cancel it we don't have to do any of that with, with tibbles it's never going to print out all of the data and then it prints the number of columns that will fit in the width of our console and then for the rest it actually tells us how many more rows are there of course it's printed 10 so there are uh, 336766 more rows and it says there are 14 more variables it was able to print five of them and it says there are the remaining 14 and it's also showing us the names of the remaining columns right or variables so this is just how uh, tibbles display on the console again a little more friendly little more informative than regular data frames of course if for any reason you wanted it to actually print out all the columns for the 10 rows you can do that by using this notation of course we are using the pipe here we are saying flights pipe print n equals 10 comma width equals inf if you say width equals inf, it says, you know, treat the width as if it's infinity and then it's going to then print all the columns because it thinks, uh, you know, there's no restriction on the width. As you remember from the previous uh, session, if you use a pipe, what you're saying is, take the results of the prior expression and feed it in as the fir first argument to the next expression. So this is the equivalent of print flights, comma, n equals 10, comma, width equals inf. If you do that, then you see the result like this. So notice that it printed 10 rows, but it did not stop with printing the number of columns that would fit in the width of the console. Instead, it continued to print the remaining columns as well. Okay, so this is just an option that you could actually use. Some more options to control how tables print. So you can say, for example, options. These are global options that you're setting for your whole R environment. So if you set this once, it'll take effect. You can say options tibble dot print max is n and tibble dot print min is m, right? Where n and m are two numbers, like right? for example, you may say print max is 15 and print min is 10, let's say, right? Then the way this works is you might have noticed that when you print some tibbles with uh, uh, fewer rows, for example, 15 rows, then it prints the entire table, right? But otherwise, if it's larger, it prints only 10 rows. Right? So these are the options that actually control that. So if the number of rows is less than or equal to n, then print all. So if you had said tibble dot print max equals 15, right? then if you have up to 15 rows, it will print the entire table. Right? Normally it prints only 10 and stops. But if it has up to 15 rows, it's going to do this. But if it has more than 15 rows, then it's only going to print 10 and then stop. Okay? So that, that's how these two things, uh, parameters work. Of course, Always after printing a table, it tells you how many rows are left and how many columns are there. So that part is already there. Now, if you always want to, uh, let's say, see all the columns rather than just the columns that fit into the column width, then you can say options table dot width equals inf. In this case, it will always print all the rows. Uh, sorry, all the columns, not rows. That's a mistake. Well, one thing you might have noticed is when we use uh, tibbles like flights, which are part of uh, packages, right? It's not something that we loaded explicitly through a, a reading a file or something. Now, those kinds of things do not display in the environment, right? So if I go and look in this R environment, I'm not going to see uh, flights displayed anywhere here. Okay, so if you want to take a look at the at this data, then what you could do is you could just execute the command view just like we would normally do. So if I did flights view, then it shows up right here. It took a little time because of the size of the data frame, uh, of the table. Okay, so that's what I'm showing in this particular slide. You could do flights view and you'll be able to view the contents of that table. 